don't go. Well, maybe soon. Maybe soon. 2022. 2022 is going to be better school year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we'll go and get started. It is a week five carb week. We love carbs, yes, don't we? And I love this week because it really gets down to talking about why carbs are so good for you and beneficial for a healthy, thriving body. When your goal is body composition changes, it could be the one thing that you're not thinking about. I mean, over the last decade, you know, 20 years or so, like it's been demonized as like the bad. And, and when, when, and before even that was, you know, fat was bad, then it's carbs are bad, fat is good. And so there's all these like back and forth things, like nobody knows what they can eat. They only know that they can eat protein. <laughs> <laughs> protein so far is safe, but I don't know, you know, plant-based eating was like throwing that. <laughs> Out throw the kink in the throw animal kink. proteins. Right, yeah. So there's a whole lot of confusion out there. And so this whole week is devoted to uh, debunking the misconceptions and uh, misunderstanding of carbohydrates. So uh, I hope by now you know that all plants are carbohydrates. There's just more dense ones, like starchy carbs, or less dense, like vegetables. All right, and so we go through that the whole week. Um, we started out the week first with the recipe revamp, and uh, I hope a lot of you have been experimenting in the kitchen. Um, if you have any ideas on any kind of revamping that you've done now or in the past even, you know, let us know. But even like all the, pretty much all the CK recipes are revamps. Meredith is the revamp queen. Yes, I love to go to Pinterest and like find something that looks really delicious and try to recreate, recreate it. it. And, yeah, and using using ingredients that more are more in line with the whole foods or your goal, you know. But you know, overall, you're just trying to you're not necessarily trying to not make it taste good. You're just trying to make it a little bit better than it was. Um, and then we go into defining what a smart carb is. So what is a smart carb? Plants. Yes. Pretty much. In that lesson, we do talk more on the, so when, we're, when we are referring to carbs most of the time, it, it, we are talking about starchy carbs, like well, visually. Yes, and that's where carbs get confusing and were for me before I started because mm -hmm. people called a donut a carb or a pizza a carb and that's not a carb and then <laughs> definitely not a smart carb that's a, a everything that's like um, a carb with fat carb <laughs> fat sugar sodium bomb right so, so those aren't carbs yeah those that's a good <laughs> point to make is that you know because people you know they'll demonize all carbs thinking like associating a donut with a potato. Yeah. You know, that's not the same thing. It's gonna do different things in your body. It's gonna digest differently. It's going to add different things to your body. Like whereas a donut would probably get digested really, really fast and go straight into fat storage. A sweet potato, however, would digest slower. Or a white potato. Or a white potato. Yes. The white potato is very high in nutrients and vitamins, and yes. it gets a bad rap. Too it really because does. Because it usually is either fried or loaded with butter and sour cream and cheese and bacon. Yeah. And yeah. coated with salt on that well, There was a meme I saw that said, don't blame butter or... Something. Don't frame the bread for what butter, butter did. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, true, I mean, though. it's not necessarily like you can't have butter and you can't have bread. It's just like all of it together and the amounts that people eat, that's where things get, you know, bad. So a smart carb is a one ingredient carb. Uh, and we went through a bunch of them, you know, like squashes are a little bit denser in carbs potatoes, any of your grains, those are a little bit denser. It doesn't mean that they're any, they're not bad. It's just you can't eat as much in portion because the carbohydrates are denser. And so the five habit cheat sheet kind of goes through that. It, it's your, it's your guideline to how much you can or should try to, you know, stay around. doesn't mean that you can't eat a little bit more or less. It just means that's a good gauge for most people. Um, but when people do think that, you know, 
they want to lose weight, they're automatically thinking, I need to cut the carbs, you know? And why is that? Well, carbs, carbohydrate, means that carbohydrates hold on to water. And so when people automatically start cutting carbs, they're like, oh my gosh, I lost all this weight. It's That's mainly some water your, weight. It's some water weight. It's like your cells are not holding on to as much water because you have depleted it of carbohydrates. So once you start adding in some carbs, you may start to feel fluffy, but that's just you holding on to a little bit more water. Um, now, before we get into the misunderstanding of carbs, which is your lesson for tomorrow on Thursday, um, today was one of the best ones. It's the gray area foods yes. lessons. Um, I really like this one because we always get the question of, is this food okay to eat or can I eat this or you know whatever and we just call a lot of, number one if you are asking the question you can, already know you already answer. know the answer if, you, if you're asking the question can I eat this food you probably already know the answer but there are some foods that fit into that gray area but there are two ways to look at it they're not really off limits like right. no foods are off limits Correct. just do they, are you choosing to fill a habit or not? Right, yes. And so we have two ways of looking at these gray area foods. Like you can either use them to bridge the gap. So it could be something like a little bit of a sauce or low sugar version of some, like a low sugar version of a sauce or a wrap that you're packing in with a bunch of plants and protein, you know, because you're used to eating sandwiches, mm -hmm. you know, you're just trying to make a little bit better choice, but then also adding in a lot of the, the habits of the plant, the proteins and all that stuff, like the good nutrient dense stuff. Um, like I'll eat a, a gray area food would be, I'll eat the rice cakes with that uh, chocolate hummus. Mm -hmm. Or I'll even do it with like peanut butter and jelly. Like yeah, I know. I like the peanut butter and jelly. I know that that's not adding like anything to my day. It's just something that. It's a nice. It's whatever. Delicious. I just wanted to eat. It's not something too terribly bad. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not a donut. <laughs> or an Oreo. Or yeah. something like that. But you know, it's just something that kind of fits in that gray area. It's not that I'm claiming it to be habit filling. It's just something that you know, may help me along the way. Do you have any gray area things that yeah, you do? I love those um, Mary's Gone Crackers. They're like a seed cracker. They're gluten-free. Uh -huh. um, I've eaten a lot of gray area foods when I've been on AIP for my autoimmune condition. Like She has Hashimoto's. So they're like Thrive and Trader Joe's have a lot of healthy junk food and so like when you're only eating plants and meats and like not having anything else and even that is restricted it was nice to be able to find yes. those kind of gray area foods that were kind of would you like to sit in the middle here? <laughs> kind of like a treat of some sort they weren't adding anything to me but they were a compliant food and so it was nice to be able to yeah. eat a plantain chip that was fried versus in yeah, a better we, oil than a Lay's potato chip yeah, or a Dorito. But you weren't saying, I'm filling my plant no. with my plantain chip. <laughs> Just That's what we're getting at. And say, hey, all hey. Right, hey, all right, now you can go away. <laughs> That's what we're getting at. It's like sometimes these little gray area type foods will pop up in, in your food. And that's totally fine. Now, whether you use them to bridge the gap, like try, like what I mentioned earlier, is for example, like a, a wrap of some sort, like or a pita, or like whole wheat pita or something like that. When just before you were using white bread sandwich, you know, or hamburgers or something like that, and you're now you're making this, you know, wrap filled, you know, habit filled uh, uh, meal with a wrap. Like that's called bridging the gap because the ultimate goal is to be a bit better and get to those meals that you're adding more nutrient dense stuff. Now there is a way to make stuff like what you were talking about, the healthier, you know, snacky foods. You can like kind of trick yourself and be like, oh, I may have been good, you know, or, oh, this is a habit, you know, like. Yeah. Strict strawberry cake has strawberries in it, but I'm not saying that I'm filling a plant habit while I'm eating it type of thing, yeah. you know. Um, and so that's the other way to look at gray area foods. Like, 
are you feeding an old habit with trying to, you know, make these foods fit? Now that would be the negative way. Yeah, I feel like those it. things like protein peanut butter cups and protein yeah. balls that are desserts it, type sweet stuff. treats that are they really if you break them down in calories they're aren't, about the same they may have healthier ingredients like honey and but it's not really much different from eating a Reese's peanut butter cup like right. calorie wise and it may be like, to bridge the gap a little bit better in the right direction, but if you eat the whole bag of peanut butter cups and right. make 10 of them, you would have just been better or eating you put, one. Or you put it in your meal plan for the week. So say yeah. like you're like, oh, I'm gonna make a bunch of big batch of protein <laughs> honey peanut butter balls and I'm gonna I eat three a day, you know, for the entire week. Like mm -hmm. that's gonna be an issue just because you're taking in probably more calories than you realize. And so while we don't count calories, you do need to be aware of what is calorie dense in your food. Now, when it comes to fat sources, now next week we start going over fat sources and like how that can get a little sticky when you start adding too many of these things. Like, cause you mentioned like a donut is not just a carb. It's yeah. a fat and sugar bomb together. And that's what creates, you know, the surplus of calories. So it's, we don't want we don't want to say that you can't have peanut butter protein balls or whatever it is if it keeps you from going over the edge like yes it could be something that bridges the gap but when it becomes a habit that's when you need to reassess things because you're not trying to feed old habits new foods so say that over and over again you're trying to not feed your old habits new foods so, and I think an example of that would be like if you had a coffee in the afternoon at work and had like something from the break room, like a donut or a piece of cake, like with your coffee, like you enjoyed that. Maybe having a protein peanut butter ball to substitute it in the beginning yeah. would be good, but it might be better to work in, if you're hungry to fill that habit with a mini meal or a shake or right. something like, like that. that. That becomes where you do your detective work. You know, where you're like, okay, I used to have this sweet bite with my coffee in the beginning. Okay, now I've replaced it with this healthier sweet bite. Totally fine. But let's get down to the real reason why do you want that moment? You know, do you just want a sweet bite or are you actually hungry? Like, would a whole food meal, like a full meal, satisfy you? And that would be more in line with your goal of, you know, getting a healthier body. Type of thing. Yes. So it's just a way to look at it. Like, like what we've always said, there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just what is your goal and what habits are you trying to fill? Because you can definitely be working still towards filling your new habits and changing those habits, which are a really hard thing. But then, you know, unconsciously, you could be making a plan to feed your old habits, the new foods. And so we just, that lesson is all about making you aware of, you know, that is a possibility and to be, you know, conscious of what you're, it's just another light bulb going off that I'm sure a bunch of you've already had, a bunch of aha moments of, you know, what triggers what and what tends to be a limiting factor. And I think we go over like limiting factors next week, I think. But, um, so tomorrow is a good lesson on, it's called the misunderstanding of carbs. And one of the reasons why we love carbs so much is like when, so technically, well, the biggest question is, everybody asks, should I go low carb? You know, you can go low carb and you can lose a lot of weight. Plenty of people have done that. Yes. But, and technically, you don't necessarily have to have a lot of carbohydrates to live if you are not an active individual. So if you are a person that does work out or just has a, you know, a physical job or something like that, um, and you're trying to go low carb, then that can definitely backfire. Like in the beginning, you can lose, you will lose weight. You you'll lose, lose a, weight. You'll lose a lot of uh, water weight um, and just cutting out a macronutrient in general makes you control the calorie intake. So you do end up losing weight that way. 
but it doesn't usually end up well in, in the long run. Um, that's why we want you to try to learn how to eat carbohydrates and not be fearful of carbs in this way where you, you, under, you, feel, you experience carbohydrates doing something good for your body. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should go low carb, well, there's a few factors that you need to think about. It's, well, what do you feel like? What's your energy like? Have you been feeling really lethargic, like groggy, um, brain fog? You know, we've mentioned this before in like the sleep lessons where when you're super tired and you're brain foggy and your brain, uh, it feeds or it runs off of carbohydrates and when you can't get enough carbohydrates to your brain, what do you want? You want more carbohydrates. Yeah. And usually the fast uh, fastly digested ones, which are the junk food. Um, so if you're feeling lethargic and energy zapped and stuff, and you have been technically not adding in those smart carbs in some of your meals throughout the day, then just go eat a potato and see how you feel. Like you don't even have to time it, like meal yeah. timing, like the whole eat car, don't eat carbs at night or whatever. I actually like carbs at night. I That's do. when I eat carbs. Or yeah. Before I try to eat a nice serving of right, carbs. Right, because if I don't, I'm eating more other, like, or wanting to eat more stuff. Yes. You know, I don't feel satisfied. And actually, uh, carbs, they help you produce melatonin. And, and they give you that warm, like, they um, give you that warm, fuzzy feeling. And so, if you eat some at nighttime, so say you eat a, your serving of potatoes or rice or quinoa or whatever it is, then you might end up sleeping better. Yeah, but if you're in the gym and you need carbs, and you can take yes. it from me, I've, I've experimented on myself <laughs> many times of trying to go low carb, and it really doesn't work well, and you're gonna kinda dig yourself more of a hole because your body can go. It'll cause your adrenals to fire up, and um, you just, kind of dig yourself a hole that then you'll have to get out of there. So it's just better to eat the carbs. Yeah. And so you, you mentioned digging a hole and like that mindset of like thinking this one path works for one person or you, they, or you see this person had really great results, you know, not eating a lick of fruit and you know, whatever. Did it last? You know, you can, like I said before, you can, you know, create some weight loss with lower carbs and then like try to work out like a maniac, well, that is not going to end well. If you are a person that wants to sustain and build muscle or be able to sustain energy levels enough to build muscle and repair and recover after your workouts, you absolutely have to eat carbohydrates. I don't mean carb load like before a race or anything like that. I mean post-workout. And so we talk about earn your carbs. Um, that's just a, that's not necessarily you have to earn your carbs. So like if you're a level one and you're like, I'm not working out this whole entire time, totally fine. We still want you to get in the habit of choosing smart carbs yes. and not being fearful to eat those smart carbs. Because remember, you are working on adding in the good. Now, if you're a level two, we've mentioned that a level two is usually person a person that exercises regularly and they have a goal to change the shape like you know build muscle and so a really really important part of that is how much can you it's not how much you can work out it's how much can you recover it's how your body's going to change and what helps your body recover is sleep and then also feeding it correctly well when you work out hard you are literally depleting the glucose sugar, however, whatever word you want, it's got a bunch of names. You're depleting the glucose, the carbohydrates stores in your muscles, and you need to replenish those. And so that's why we say earn your carbs. Like a post-workout meal is the perfect time to have those one ingredient smart carbs because your, your muscles are like deplenished and they're ready to be replenished mm -hmm. and soak it up and not store it as fat because carbohydrates are your fast access energy. And so whatever you don't use in the moment is going to get stored somehow. It's either gonna get stored in, your, stored in your muscles, your liver, or body fat. 
But once that once it reaches like once your muscles don't need any more, then it's going to go to the other places, and we don't want that. So. Carbs are good for working out. Make sure that you read that lesson tomorrow. That's all in there. We could probably talk like another hour on yeah. <laughs> carbohydrates. But if anybody has any questions on, you know, what their meals should look like, remember you've got that five habit cheat sheet that tells you the portions and also in your uh in your let or in your habits, you'll have the portion sizes as well going by the hand size. Um, just stick to what you know. Like, don't try to complicate it. Think about just adding these different things to your meals and see how you feel. If you have any questions, reach out to your coach. Mm -hmm. And um, and that is that's it. it. Have a great week. And next week is week six. Ooh, I think it's 80-20. Oh, yeah, I like 80-20. 80-20 lesson. Talk about fat. Talk about limiting factors. All those fun things. All right. Bye. We shall see you later. Bye.